Lecture 80 will be about uh, stress tensor properties. But first, before we get into the stress tensor, there is, um, as I mentioned in the last lecture, something different about a stress tensor. So let's just review quickly about um, how other tensors are. Uh, first, uh, property tensors uh, in the normal sense, and I'll explain what that means uh, uh, in a minute. So uh, here is an example of uh, the crystal symmetries, cubic, tetragonal, etc. You know, their particular uh, feature, so for example, cubic, you recall that out of the three corners, we have three, uh, four, uh, um, out of the corners of the cube, we have four threefold axes, right, that are pointing in the uh, one, one, one directions. And um, uh, typically, when we did that process we talked about, where, remember for monoclinic, we uh, put the twofold axis along x3. And the result of that was when I do a 180 degree spin and I look at the transformation of axes here, you know, I end up with a situation that I introduce zeros uh, uh, in uh, uh, these components. Um, so I ended up. Um, I'm sorry, not zeros. Um, I ended up having a, a um, one, two. Let me start off with the original here. So I started off with, say, the triclinic case where I have all of the, um, all of the elements in the tensor. And then what happened was when I put the twofold axis in. This guy, this guy, this guy went to zero because I put this along x3, and of course it would have been these components that were still there if I put it around uh, uh, y, for example. So, um, and that's because the only way, um, you know, if I rotate 180 degrees and I want the properties to be the same because, you know, it has that symmetry element, uh, we had to reduce those to zero because um, they flip sign, and that's why we had to do that. So if you use that same procedure for normal properties, uh, second rank tensor properties, uh, you get the following. So here's the monoclinic case that I was just uh, pointing out. And notice that um, here, because they put the twofold axis along the y axis, I end up with uh, these two instead of these two. But that's the only, only difference there. Um, and you can see that, that if I do the same procedure, for example, I have to have three fold axes coming out of each corner. Uh, I end up in a cubic system with not only needing to have zeros everywhere except for the diagonal, but then they all have to be the same value, of course, right? And that you kind of suspect that just from thinking about the symmetry of the of the cubic crystal. Um, and uh, it turns that the quadra the uh, revolution is about the uh, principal axis x3. Then you know, remember we talked about how if you put a three or four or six fold axis. You end up with uh, the diagonal, you know, uh, but um, the uh, S3 can be a different value than the other two, uh, and so on. So each one of these, and remember we talked about triclinic being the most general, where all the spots are filled. So you can use this kind of transformation of axes to represent, and remember what that's ultimately representing is we're saying, you know, we use the conductivity example. You know, suppose I'm I'm looking at some current that's flowing out from some field that I applied. That if I rotate the, this crystal 180 degrees, and it has a twofold axis, there shouldn't be any difference in properties. And so that's how you connect the use of our um, coordinate transformations uh, to um, putting the symmetry element in, and then determining which properties drop out. Now, now we need to think a little bit about our our stress tensor, we say, aha, our stress tensor, if it's cubic material, doesn't that mean that uh, this has to be true? That I have zeros everywhere except for the diagonal. Correct? Well, it turns out that uh, that indeed is not correct that you can have uh, many different stress states. Well, how can that be? Because if I have, um, let's say, again, this was a cubic crystal, I thought I just showed you that uh, if I need the thing to be transformed under the different symmetry axes, then um, by definition, uh, I would have to have a lot of things go, go to zero. And the difference here is that uh, we're talking about that stress, 
is a field tensor. And what that means is essentially it's applied. It's not a fixed property. So for example, uh, if, um, if I'm looking at some you know, property like uh, thermal expansion that's attached to the properties of that crystal as symmetry of that crystal. Uh, essentially when I show a stress tensor like this, I'm applying that, right? So for example, in the very specific case of a uniaxial experiment, I am, you know, let's say putting a weight here and I'm pulling down on it and uh, sigma is just one direction. But if this is sigma x, or actually let's use the notation we should use, which is sigma one one, and this is sigma two two, and then sigma three three would come out of the board here. So these two are zero. I'm only applying stress around there, and so I could write uniaxial stress as you know sigma. Uh, sorry, uh, this is zero. Basically zeros everywhere. So everywhere is zero, but here uh, would be the uh, uniaxial uh, stress. Uh, and so this doesn't have to follow the symmetry because it's me that's applying it. Okay, so that's uh, uh, different than uh, the normal case. So that's what's a field tensor is. A field tensor, it makes sense because another field tensor, for example, in our other examples, uh, would be electric field, right? You know, I'm applying a field. I can apply any kind of field I want. It doesn't have to follow it. In this case, when I use sigma for conductivity, sorry about the multiple use of sigma, but that's what's done in the field. Sigma conductivity would be a, um, uh, a regular property tensor because I'm applying the field, right? So stress is a field tensor. It's the application of something and therefore isn't restricted to uh, the crystal uh, symmetry. What other properties besides the fact it's a, uh, a field tensor, uh, what else can we say about uh, the, um, uh, the stress tensor? Well, let's do the classic thing. Let's imagine this, you know, square. And, uh, you know, I'm going to choose this to be the uh, x1 direction and this is going to be the x2 direction. Remember that our um, our convention uh, for this is, for example, you know, uh, sigma 1, 1, what it means is that uh, it's acting in xi direction with normal on the plane normal um, normal you know acting plane with acting plane normal in x j if this is j and this were i right direction so here it's in the it's acting in the x1 direction that's why it's a one and it's acting on this plane and therefore it's uh, one right because the normal to that plane is x1 so it's one one now let's look at um, the case where I look at a at a stress here Right, and I'm actually acting on this plane here. I'll shadow it like that to emphasize that. Well, it's still acting in the first one, so it'll be a sigma. It'll be a sigma one. But actually, um, remember that that it's on this plane, and the normal to that plane is x two, and so it'll be x two. So, um, and of course that must be balanced. If I'm applying that or something, it has to be balanced in the opposite way. 
Um, but already you see something odd. Well, if I'm doing that, if I have this shear here and this shear there, uh, it's going to rotate, right? You can tell it's going to rotate clockwise. So what that means is that uh, these other opposite cases where, you know, I have, if you think about this one, that's now acting in the in the x2 direction. So that's sigma 2, right? And uh, it's, it's the normal. It's operating on this face, and so the normal is x1, and so that's 2, 1. And so now you're seeing how essentially if we're not going to have rotation, and remember in all of these... We apply stress, we're assuming equilibrium, and so this thing's not flying through space translationally or it's rotating. And so what that tells us now is that um, to avoid rotation, uh, sigma ij must equal uh, sigma ji. So that's just a fundamental. The other thing that we have to pay attention to is that um, uh, we're going to have to use in, uh, indication that if we're in the positive x1 and positive x2 direction, that's going to be the plus, right? So, uh, for example, here, this is going to be a plus, and this one would be a plus, where the other direction would be minuses. So it's a convention. So what this means, for example, is that if I just have a sig 1, 1, and it's pulling, like I have here in the red, pulling this way, that's tension, right? So positive is is uh, tension, OK? So let's look at some other special uh, states. Since it's applied, we can do anything we want. We showed you the uniaxial case. Uh, something that's important in my research field is a very simple one where you apply stress. And typically, they could be the same stress. So of course, they could be different. So maybe I'll just put sigma 1 and sigma 2 to distinguish that. But, um, you know, this is a biaxial stress. So this is a state of biaxial stress. And remember, since it's applied, I can apply that if I want. And then finally, um, not to your surprise, um, with the diagonal formed, that's triaxial stress. So what that means is um, if I uh, am having all of these positive, it means they're all under tension, which means I'm expanding the cube, right? So it's a hydrostatic expansion. And then if these are all negative, I'm pressing on all faces, so it's hydrostatic compression. And that's very important because depending on um, looking at electronic properties, for example, um, I might want to look at taking out a compressive piece that's in all direction and then looking at only the asymmetrical pieces, like the uniaxial piece left behind, which you often see. So there might be some common stress that's uh, total compression or expansion. And then uh, you take that out because that's some sort of, you know, uh, effect on the overall uh, electronic properties, but it's equal in all direction. And then what often in the case of electronic materials is that uh, if you have a, a, an asymmetric uh, type of stress in some uniaxial or biaxial direction, that can change the properties in, in, in different directions. 
And so you want to look at that component more than the, than the hydrostatic uh, component. So those are some special stress states. Uh, just one more before we finish this lecture is that uh, imagine if we have our, our theoretical you know, cube here again, and actually in this direction, right, we compress, and in this direction we pull. So the way I've drawn it here, if I'm pulling, uh, that would be uh, under tension, which would be positive. So let's call this the sigma 1, 1, you know, direction. So therefore, if I looked at the stress tensor, I would have uh, a positive, you know, sigma here. And then in the other direction, the y direction, I'd have that. And let's suppose that it's um, 0 here. This is a 0, not a sigma so uh, if I look at this I have a uh, only elements that are there are the the in the one one I'm pulling on it so I got compression uh, sorry tension tension in this direction and I'm pushing on it in this direction simultaneously now what's interesting is of course if I you know rotate the crystal 45 degrees and I look at the components that I've created. So remember, essentially, this is a transformation of axes, right? So if I think about it, um, I have on this one here, if I look on this face, I'm going to have a piece that's coming down, and I'm going to have a piece uh, from this guy that's coming across. So in a new coordinate system, when I add these together, I have something going like that right and uh, so what I end up with is and what that is is a state of pure shear and if I were to write that in the new coordinate system because I rotated 45 degrees uh, it would be the same sigma in the shearing position one two right I'm running out of pixels here but it's zero so here i have positive sigma minus sigma rotate at 45 degrees in the coordinate system i have the same sigmas across there and this is pure shear because i only have the off diagonal components one two and two one and that's a pure uh, shear stress so those are examples of some special states and uh, properties of stress tensors.